one voice, calling in the wilderness, one voice, trying to impress, one voice, trying to assess the meaning of one. They say two is better than one. They say one is the loneliest number, and when I was younger, I thought that. But now I seek the strength of the singular. Insofar as when I stand alone, my knowing must be down to the bone. I cannot be wishy or washy, questioning or quasi, sure. I must know beyond a doubt before I stand up and shout out my life. I must know what is true, what is noble, what is right, before I declare a fight on the opposite. I must know my convictions. I must first be convicted, or I'll simply be depicted as one of those. Of those people who stand on a box and shout that we're lost! And maybe we are. But I think it would be more powerful by far for us to stand on our conviction to love. To love. Above all else. To love. Out of. The reality. That we. First were loved. That is something worthy of conviction. Although it may seem like a contradiction. <coughs> that for sinners he went to his crucifixion. So use your voice. To tell that story. Instead of always seeking the glory. In your own articulation. Your personal narration. A fabrication of translation. Speak only of salvation. Stand and shout. We are lost. We are lost. We are lost. Until we exhaust our voice and must love instead in silence. Indeed, not word. Unseen, unheard. Until the metaphor is blurred. Actions are stronger than words. So do as I do, not just what I say. Or the media will have a heyday. Taking your words out of context. Making simple what was complex. Until it all sounds like nonsense. So your voice and your life must agree. See? And the lost will be found. When we stand on holy ground. And shout that he came to stop the brutality. He came to love us beautifully. Truthfully. Let that be our eulogy.